Right, so welcome to the Pacer and Steered Kenley Q&A evening. I'm just going to go around everyone and everyone can introduce themselves and give a bit of background. Uh, Neil? How are you doing? My name's Neil Mercer. I'm pacing 1 hour 30 this year with the Belfast City Half Marathon. Um, I run for North Belfast Harriers. I've paced the Half Marathon on numerous occasions and I've also paced the Full Marathon, so I'm well experienced in the Belfast. Zebra, Neil, thank you. Paddy? Uh, my name is Paddy. Um, I also run for North Belfast Harriers along with me and Mercer. We were both pacing um, 1 hour 30. Um, I've paced previous half marathons as well, so hopefully no exception today. Good man, good man. Um, Paul? I'm Pip Bracken, Jog Moira, and I'll be pacing to our 15 in the half marathon. I've paced in the marathon before on a park run. Um, but this is my first time doing a half marathon and I'm really looking forward to it. Good man, Paul. Good man, Paul. And Gareth? Hey, uh, Gareth Armstrong. And with Atlas Running Club in County Down, um, I've previously paced the rock, Run Rock and Roll Half Marathon Series. Um, so some of them might have run with me before uh, down in Dublin um, at 2.30, 2.45 and, and three hours. So anything from 11.25 right up to nearly 13 minutes all a mile. Um, so looking forward forward to my first uh, time pace in Belfast City half marathon. I've, I think I've run it now from 2016 every year. So, hey, my God, thank you. Stuart? I'm Stuart Kennedy. Uh, I paced actually once before for Belfast Marathon yeah. a long time ago. It must be about 10 years ago. I uh, paced uh, 330 pace. Yeah, you're not going to believe it. I'm a first marathon. I was 13 years old, so I was. And between 13 and 15, I ran five marathons. So I did. So I wouldn't recommend that as a coach. I have to say they run marathons so young. But I run for a club called Beach Mount Harris, which my father is Belfast. Super, Stuart. Thank you. All right, well, we'll get into the questions here. And the first one's for Neil. Uh, Neil, what would your number one piece of advice be when you're running with a pacer? Running with a pacer? Um, I would say sort of be re realistic about the goal that you want to achieve. Um, we all want to be as runners quicker than we actually are. So um, how I would look at that, if you've never broke two hours before, there's no point in setting out with the 145 pacer because it's going to ruin your half marathon for you. And not only that, trust your pacer on the day. There's sometimes when I've been pacing, I've went out with a group and some people think the pace is too slow and they're feeling good and away they go. But you know, the half marathon and the marathon, they're, it's a long race. There's a long way to go. So you don't want to, gas yourself out too early. So stick with your pacer, trust your pacer, because we we know the route, we know where we can speed up and slow down. And nine times out of 10, I've found people that go on and leave us at the start, we are passing them around mile 10, mile 11. And the people that run with the pacers usually strong or finish a lot stronger. So that's, that was great. Advice. Here's me. Um, Paddy, up next. Um, is it better to stagger my pace or follow the same steady pace throughout the race? Well, all courses are different. Um, say Belfast is one of the more flatter ones in fairness, if you take into consideration the Scrabble Tower. Scrabble we've done recently there, um, it's very undulating. So say there's times where when people, when we're pacing half, roughly the time you go is 6.50, 6.52. So but when looking up the hill, the early maze, you're, you're doing 7.15s. And people sort of like, as Neil said there, a lot of people will sort of like go right, I'm off pace here. I'll not be able to make this up. But uh, again, trust the pacer. We've done the course. We do training on, especially Belfast. Like we're around these roads more more often than enough. So we know when to go up, when to go down, and we're not going to blow the legs out of you because at the end of the day, we want as many people across the line with us as started. Good man, good man. Just right, just right. Um, moving. Uh, Natalie's not here. Rebecca's not here. Paul. Um. What other forms of exercise would you do when you're training for a half marathon? For example, I enjoy swimming. Should I continue with this or should I change to strictly running? No, I would say yes, absolutely. Cross train, like why wouldn't you? Um, swimming, for example, is a fantastic all around body workout. It's uh, good for your breathing and your cardio. And, you know, I find it helps with your muscle recovery. You know, if you're out pounding the streets all the time, running, 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 especially as as a new runner, as I experienced myself at the start, you know, um, that's where you you pick up, especially your calf niggles, you know, just from running maybe five days a week mm -hmm. with two days off. But no, I'd strongly recommend cross training, your swimming, your cycling, your walking, your hiking, a bit of gym work, and just 
just alternate it. You know, most of us run running clubs that have a coach that you can you can lean on and get and get guidance and advice. But um, all day long, if you can fit cross training into your half marathon training plan, by all means, do so. Definitely, a bit of variety keeps it fun and fresh as well. So it does. Indeed. And um, uh, Gareth, now, how do you motivate yourself if you were to hit the wall? Thankfully, at, at half marathon distance, I'm sure the rest of the pacers will agree with me. It doesn't usually happen or happen that often. Thankfully, it more tends to happen at full marathon distance. And I've experienced it many times at full marathon distance myself. Um, it has happened to me on one occasion, um, Lisburn Half Marathon, I think it was back in June 2016. I remember it happening to me where I was running just in front of the, the two R pacers at the time. Uh, I think it happened in around 10, 11 miles. And I, I think it was maybe down to the weather and the climate that night. It was very humid, uh, hot and sticky June night. But you can take two things on board. You can take physical action straight away to combat it and stop it. You know, you can, you can break down into a walk and sometimes it's frowned upon and maybe people do look down on it. But if you can take walk-run breaks, it's better than just walking or, or totally stopping altogether, which is the, the thing that you want to avoid at all costs. So if you've got to walk a minute, run a minute until you get yourself back in it, and you might find from the point where you hit the wall to the actual finish line, you mightn't get back into, you know, into a full run again. You might have to keep that walk-run going. Yeah, uh, and, as, and as I say, it's better than dropping out totally or, or keep walking the rest of the course to the finish lines. So you take that physical action um, mentally, um, you got to dig deep inside yourself. You probably think of your, your, your worst times <laughs> and think to yourself, I'm glad I'm privileged to be out here running this half marathon. Um, there's people standing on the side of the footpath would give anything to be in your position. There may be and can't take part in running events because of illness, previous illness, previous injuries, disabilities, and they would do anything to be in your position on that road, completing a half marathon. So put yourself in their shoes uh, and, uh, and dig deep mentally inside yourself and just think about that finishing line. Think about celebrating when you get there with your friends and family. And probably a lot of first-time runners will run for charity as well, which I have done on many occasions. Think about all that amount of money, hundreds or thousands of pounds that you have raised for that charity, which will probably have a, a very significant thing to you personally or your family or one of your, your friends that you'll know. So use that to motivate yourself the whole way to the finish line as well. But really, if you can, prevention is better than cure. So if you can hydrate yourself and you, you know your nutrition before the race and during the race, it will it'll hopefully stop you hitting the wall at half marathon distance. But if it does happen, don't be afraid to speak to the pacer you're running with or anybody else competing around you. And as I say, slow right down and walk if you need to, and you, you should get there. That's super, yeah. Plenty of ways there. And just the biggest thing, don't panic. Just think about that feeling at the end. Yeah. Um, now, moving on. Not, Neil, another question for yourself. Uh, yeah. What would be the benefits and advantages of running with a pacer rather than running by myself? I think um, touching on some of the things that the other pacers have sort of said, well, I'll go back to that in a minute. Um, mm -hmm. With a pacer, to me, there's lots to think about to get your, your nutrition right. You want to get your kit and everything out the night before. You make sure you're watching everything works. Running with a pacer, it's one less thing to worry about because you know if your goal is for talk sake, if you're running with myself or Patty, it's 1.30, you're not going to have to think about that or your pace. Just stick with us. We're going to get you in, whether we slow down slightly or we speed up slightly. You know, we're going to get to the end of the time. Um, one of the things that um, to touch on there, um, the wall, there's many a times in a half marathon where I've hit a wall. Yeah. One of the good advantages of running with a pacer is you don't go out too quick. Um, I hear lots of people talking about bank and time will go out because we know we're going to suffer in the second half of the half marathon. But if you go out at a nice, steady pace, especially running with the pacers, you're going to get stronger. You're going to finish your half marathon far stronger than you started which is ultimately what you want at the end of the day to finish strong. And as well in that, there's certain areas within Belfast Half Marathon, the, the conditions can be quite windy. Mm -hmm. So I found when you're running with a pacer, you're running with the group. If you're struggling in the wind, you can sort of, sort of slot in behind the group and be protected from the wind. So you can just concentrate on your running. And that usually helps. Um, I think there's anything else to do. No, well, one other thing as well, um, as a pacer, we'll try and run it as evenly as we can yeah. obviously probably mentioned as well with ours i mean there's there's the odd we climb in belfast and for myself personally 
I will slow down slightly on the climbs because you don't want to take too much out of people on the hills. And that, like, you're just going to speed up that wee extra bit on the downs where they are within the half marathon route. So we will make up any time lost where we do slow the pace. So from that point of view, there's lots of benefits to run with the pacer. You just sort of have to trust us on the day that we're going to get you in on time. No, there's definitely way more benefits than cons. So there is. It's oh, there is. Definitely. Definitely good for new runners and all too. Um, moving on. Moving on to Stuart now. Uh, Stuart, how early or late should I taper my training miles prior to race day and to what extent? Yeah, just, just to start off and listen to the pacers are, I, I think the first thing people should look at, because this, this is out, out a good month, a few months early mm-hmm. for people training, is getting the clubs, getting the club. The experience we've just heard from the, our pacers here, from the clubs across Belfast and across Northern Ireland is invaluable. Mm-hmm. You get yourself into a club, get yourself into a group and get loads of advice. But the taper, back to the taper stuff, what do you usually do? Them? Everyone knows a marathon taper is usually about three weeks out. So this is this is a half marathon. That's a good rule of thumb of maybe your last big session would be the Thursday before the so two so a week and a half out. So your last session that'd be a hill session or a speed session. That'd be your last big session. Your kind of fastest session. You and then on the Sunday, on the Sunday before the half marathon, I wouldn't do any more than eight, eight to ten miles Sunday before, and then an ACC week off the marathon. Just keep the legs spinning over, taking over, keeping yourself motivated, keeping yourself focused for the half, for the start of the half marathon. Super, that's great advice. Um, another one for you, Stuart. Just going to rattle for a quick fire yeah. here. Um, what dietary advice could you give for pre-race, during race, and the night before from your experience? Yeah, well, the th- thing for me is it's people you really need to look at. Some of the guys, boys have talked about this already. That is really, like, you really need to look at your dad if you're training for half marathon. You've got to commit yourself for three or four months here to achieve a half marathon. And hopefully after your marathon, you're going to go on. Use that as a base for the month. Starting to get used to eating healthy and eating right for your run. So for our big runs, the boys will tell you here in this, is you get lots of carbs into you on a Saturday. Go to carbs into you. Make sure you plant your hydration as well. And start to use things like gels too as well. Because the thing about the, the half marathon, the boys are talking about hitting the wall there, is one of the things that will help you hit the wall is that if you, you don't have fuel on the day and you, you lose a lot of carbs in the day as well. So a gel a gel during the half marathon is perfect. The night before, I, I, what I normally do the night before a race, uh, an endurance race is, I would put a pot of pasta on and eat it all day long. So I make sure I have loads of carbs on. I it, make sure I drink a couple of litres of water that day too as well. And in the morning of marathon, I don't, uh, the half marathon, I really don't change that much. If I eat porridge, which I normally do, or if I eat pancakes, depending on the person who's, who's running the half marathon, I don't change my diet at all. But the thing about the half marathon today, if it, just in case the warm one like that, uh, less one that was talked about, which is really hot and humid day, is that makes you drink before before the, the half marathon, you drink early and often, sips during it, and have one or two gels during it as well. And also when you're trying to recover after it, make sure you get protein and carbs in you then the first 15 minutes, that'll help you recover pretty quickly. Definitely, the dad's so important, so it is, it'll help you a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And then, finally, last question. Should I focus on my distance, or should I focus on my pace when I'm training? As, as the other boys would tell you as well, Ferrari's a space of life as well. We're yeah. train, train as well. If you just run miles, you're going to get bored pretty quick as well. It's very hard to motivate yourself when you're doing the same thing day in, day out. So what most, as is the thing about joining a club is, most clubs would have couple of sessions during the week, like a Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesday a session, you do like a speed session, faster session on a Tuesday and a hill session on a Thursday. And then thankfully we've got our park runs around around the country now as well at the minute. So I'd get a wee park run as well for a faster pace tempo run on a Saturday and then your long endurance run on a Sunday. So a good mixture of it. And all don't forget all those all those uh, runs are building up your endurance too. Mm-hmm. So that there's no wasted runs. Your hill session is going to build up your endurance. Your faster speed session is going to do that as well. Also what these sessions do as well is that they, they also work on your technique as well because an efficient runner is a better runner also as well, especially over a half marathon. You think how many times your legs turn over over a half marathon and the way, the way you run as well. If you can improve that slightly, you'll improve time and have a, a far better experience than the day of the half marathon. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, I think that's all our questions from all the public sorted. Does anyone have any other advice or any burning thing that would, that would advise anybody? Just on the... Uh... Just on the gels there. Yeah. If you can work out what gels that particular race is using on the day, to get familiar with the gel that you're using, because there's no point in you training with like a high five and the race that you're going to be running is using those specific type of gels. So if you get used to the gel that you're going to be using on the day, oh, then that's good. Yeah. Run. Because not a lot of runners think about that. Just after movies. your last long run, your Sunday long, mm-hmm. if you can sort of like up your, your protein intake by about 20%. To recover any muscle injuries or things like that, it's always good before you start carb loading. 
Super, yeah. super, it's fantastic. Yeah. Matthew, if you can put a list up, even the website, Northern Athletics website for local clubs for people who are tuning in. Yeah, I got the idea. Contact details of any local clubs because as, as, you've, as you've heard in this, uh, on this uh, Zoom here, it's a wealth of experience in clubs. is unbelievable. Big time. And linked up with any of these guys on this tonight, <laughs> getting great advice and experience. So you are, that's invaluable. That, especially if people are on the internet all the time searching for stuff. These guys are working off what works. They've done this themselves. They've run the half marathons. They've run the marathons. So they know what they're mm -hmm. talking about. And that's that's what you need. You need someone who's a kind of, kind of with loads of experience who spend a bit of time with you out in the runs as well. And the club will support you too as well. Definitely. There's clubs all across the country, even just for the yeah. purposes of sales. We've got a good uh, a good distance across the country. So yeah, that's fantastic. If anyone else has done anything, we'll just end it there. Brilliant. I'll, start, I'll start recording. We have a question here about footwear and clothing, what to wear on race day. Um, because you've been training for the past couple of months, it's been over the summer, so I'm sure it's been quite warm. Um, and you might think that the temperature will obviously change when September comes around. So, when it comes to footwear, that one's quite straightforward. Just don't wear anything new on race day, really. That's a general rule of thumb. Don't do or don't wear everything, anything new on race day. Um, so just make sure you're wearing a pair of shoes that you've trained in before, that you're comfortable in, um, and that you know you'll be comfortable in for the distance. And that will vary based on person. Everybody's different. Um, when it comes to clothing, I'm sure you've all been training in just shorts and a t-shirt recently um, just to stay cool. Um, same thing kind of applies. Don't go out and buy a new outfit um, on race day, you just still want to be wearing clothes, but clothes that you are comfortable in and that you have ran in before. Um, when it comes to the temperature, the general rule of thumb is to dress about like 10, as if it were 10 or 15 degrees warmer than it is. Um, to be completely honest, I wouldn't overthink this one. Um, it'll, it, you know, a September half marathon, I would still be wearing shorts and a t-shirt. Um, what you do want to think about is making sure you're warm. Oh. Making sure you're warm before and after the race, so whether that means having a friend or a family member with you at the start line, um, so you can, you know, wear a sweatshirt and then just take it off um, and toss it to them right away. A lot of people do um, wearing a trash bag or uh, sorry, a bin bag. Um, you can just like cut cut a hole in the top for your head and then for your arms, um, and then throw that away uh, on the start line. And then just afterwards, when you get to the finish line, if you can have someone around there. And they can give you, you know, another layer that you can wear um, just to stay warm before and after the race. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that answers Hi, the, the question. I'm bit. Victoria and I'm pacing two hours at the Belfast City Half Marathon. So whether or not this is your first half marathon or your 100th half marathon, I hope that the training is going well and that you're going to have a really good day. So um, one question that I've received is, which pacers should you go with on the day? If this is your first half marathon and you're not sure what pace you'll be running at or what time you're aiming for, I would suggest to pick your most recent 10k time and multiply it by two and add a little bit on, add a couple of minutes on to that and that should give you a rough estimate of what time you should aim for for your half marathon. So for example, if you've done a 10k recently in one hour, times that by two, you get two hours, add a bit on to that and get go with that pacer. So for example, you might want to start off um, with the 2.30 pacer or between the two hours and 2.30 and aim to catch up with the two hour pacer at a certain stage. Or if you are simply just looking for a PB, Go with the pacer that will help you achieve your PB. I would say aim high but be realistic with yourself. You don't want to slow way down and lose confidence in your ability. Um, go with a pacer that is suitable to that PB that you're trying to achieve. Another way you can decide what pacer to go with is to come along to the 10 mile run that, that we are having on the 14th of August and give that pace a go. So for me I'm doing two hour I'm doing a two hour time at the half marathon. So on the 14th of August I will be running a 10 mile route at around just over nine minute miles to help you achieve that two hour goal. Uh, so come along and try that pace if it's suitable for you. 
come with me on the day um, and try and get that time. Uh, so yeah, I hope I answered your question and if you have any more questions feel free to ask the page or ask me on the 14th of August and I wish you all the best for the rest of your training and I'll see you in September.